Hey everybody, I wanted to show you guys this because this happened here in Mexicali and Calexico. The woman is apparently a Mexican trying to come back to Mexico, but she didn't have her mouth covering piece. She didn't have her cubrebocas. So look what happened to her. <laughs> Damn. All right. We're going to watch again. We're, we're look, check this out. I'm going to lower the volume. So right there, the dude's asking for um, why isn't she wearing her uh, mouthpiece? You know, why is she wearing something to cover her mouth? She still insisted to try to get inside, tries to rough a little bit. And it starts getting into a verbal argument with this. Um, it looks like it's a. ¿Qué es esa persona? Es INM, es inmigración. Te. In this video, this is from Brazil. People are waiting in line to get emergency from emergency funds from their Brazilian president Bolsonaro. Bolsonaro, huh? All right. Well, either way, they're in line to get this uh, emergency funds, like we've had the stimulus check. Bolsonaro. So they're pretty long lines, just, um, I mean, it's a necessity. It's crazy. So, um, uh, I don't know what that lady was trying to say. So, uh, All right, well, um, we can't understand them unfortunately but uh, this is impacting the whole world this has impacted the whole world much countries have the fortunate outcome of helping their citizens and some do not some don't care fortunately Brazil is one of like the top Latin American countries in the south so they have a spotlight just like any other country would to try to help the citizens or be flamed by the owner, it was the UN. But at the time, you know, uh, it's, it's just it's just very hard. It's complicated. Let's let's go on to the next video. I just want to show you guys that it's happening in Brazil. It's happening all over the world. Like even if I don't show you the videos, this is happening all over the world. Right here in Brazil, they they're in line because they want their emergency funds, aka aka like a stimulus check, right? Which is pretty messed up because some don't get it. All right, we're gonna move on to the next video. And in this video, uh, in Mexico, they had a similar stimulus program like the United States had. This one being for uh, business owners. Um, there, there was about no. What do you mean about? There was exactly sixteen thousand eight hundred credits being given out to family business owners. Each credit is worth about a thousand dollars in pesos it's about twenty five thousand each credit it's not even about that's what they said each credit is worth twenty five thousand pesos together 
when you when you multiply eighteen thousand um, eighteen thousand eight hundred no sixteen thousand eight hundred times twenty five thousand you get four hundred and twenty million pesos so they give out four hundred twenty men four hundred twenty million pesos in this stimulus similar stimulus program here in Mexico check it out. Con la cifra de la Secretaría de Economía, hasta ayer 5 de mayo se han otorgado 16.800 créditos a la palabra por 25.000 pesos a beneficiarios del programa de apoyo financiero a empresas. Ok, so right there he just said 16.800 credits were given out to Mexicans uh, with business businesses. Each credit is about 25.000 pesos, equaling 420 million pesos en total familiares. Esto significa una dispersión de 420 mil millones de pesos. La titular de la dependencia, Graciela Márquez, confirmó que hasta el momento se han contactado un total de 884 mil beneficiarios y se tiene como meta otorgar un millón de créditos. Recordó que el gobierno federal no pide ni depósitos ni adelantos para la realización de este trámite a fin de que no se dejen sorprender por defraudadores. All right, and at the end he said that there's, they're, they're thinking about giving one million credits out. So they're thinking about raising from 16,800 credits to 1 million. If 16,800 credits is equal to 420 million pesos, guess how much 1 million would be. Okay, now in this video, the, um, this reporter that I actually watch a lot, he's, he's pretty funny. He actually, because um, there's a problem right here in Mexico. I don't know if you guys have heard. There's a problem here in Mexicali, Mexico, almost every state. Um, beer. Beer is running out. Beer is... There's a drought here in uh, Mexicali. There's no beer anywhere. See, that's a big, big problem here in Mexico for a lot of people. It's said that right here in Mexico, they drink about 95 million liters of beer every year, which is crazy. But let's hear it from this guy. I'm going to try to translate everything he says, but I'm going to try to keep up with him. El pasado 10 de abril, la Secretaría de Agricultura diera luz verde a las cerveceras para reiniciar su producción. Luego de... So right there he said that the government gave the beer companies, basically the factories, uh, green light to, re to restart the production, to start production again. Publicarse el decreto en el Diario Oficial de la Federación de la Suspensión de Actividades No Esenciales. El 31 de marzo, Hugo lopez Gatel, el subsecretario de Prevención y Promoción de la Salud, aseguró que esta autorización estaba equivocada. Muchos de And right now he's saying that, well, if in official records, no one ever gave the authorization for the beer factories to continue production. In fact, they actually came on a live stream with Andres Manuel López Obrador, the president of Mexico, to say that no, we're, we didn't give green light to beer, uh, beer production to start again. We're actually saying that they can't start production until, you know, this pandemic kind of eases up. So they just wanted to correct everybody saying that there wasn't going to be any um, beer for, for quite some time. So whatever beer you, you could have got, that's the beer you get. And when that happened, literally here in Mexico, Mexicali, everywhere in Mexico, people bought beer like if it was toilet paper. And I'm being very serious. <laughs> so that guy, when he was, uh, he was like, what? He's like, people, people were saying here in Mexico, like, what? Wait. There's not going to be no beer. There's not going to be production of beer. How? He was just joking around. But a lot of people are taking it like that. Honestly, like I'm kind of one of those. I'm not. I'm not going to lie. Why lie? I, I kind of drink beer every every now and then. Hay una disposición general de la autoridad sanitaria que ha establecido con toda precisión que se suspenden temporalmente las actividades laborales, excepto las esenciales, que están claramente identificadas en el decreto del Consejo de Salud General y en el acuerdo de la Secretaría de Salud publicado el 31 de marzo. Y ahí no se incluye la fabricación, la comercialización de cerveza. Entonces, eso se va a enmendar, Secretario de Agricultura eh, ya There was in no way an authorization by the government to um, to start up production again. In fact, everything was shut down because of the COVID-19. And he just wanted to clarify to everybody, everybody that um, that is in Mexico, that no beer production is not going to start because we have not let it start. And when he said that, a lot of people went crazy, started buying beer like crazy. Cartas en el asunto y se va a enmendar a la brevedad. Entonces eso es un error. No, no deben continuar. Eh, la industria cervecera no tiene autorización para eh, restablecer operaciones. So right there, my man said. Um, 
the beer factories or beer companies do not have the self-authorization to restart their production by themselves. You know, the government said that there wasn't going to be any beer um, production or any other any industry that's not a necessity to the to um, the population is going to be you know on hold for now on pause. So beer is included. So there wasn't no beer, and that's a big problem here in Mexico. All right, moving on to the next video. And this video, I just wanted to show you guys because uh, it's pretty big news right here. It should be pretty big news. A lot of cops and federales were caught or, you know, basically ratted out that they were involved in a robbery. You know what I mean? In a robbery. So check this out. And then in, in, the late, in, in this video later on, oh, you know what? Just watch this first. So it was a false... It was a false, um, it was basically home invasion because they had no order to, uh, they had no order, um, there's a certain order to get into a house and check it, you know, it's, aquí es orden de cateo, I don't, it's, in English I forgot what it's called, but it's basically like a home inspection by the law. So there was 34, 34 law enforcement agents doing a fake, uh, they were just doing basically a home invasion because they weren't, they didn't have no order to go and check that house for drugs or anything like that. So check this out, man. So one police has been caught and they're hoping to catch the other people basically like a domino effect so we're gonna have to i'm gonna have to try to um, tap into that and just you know keep it keep you tuned into this because this is pretty this is pretty crazy <laughs> ratas all right and in the state puebla in this one little city about a hundred people a hundred pe a mob of people in a, in the a city in the state of Puebla basically killed these two let, let's just watch this Perdona, dos sujetos a quienes acusaron de intentar secuestrar a uno de sus pobladores los presuntos secuestradores fueron golpeados y quemados dentro del automóvil uh. en el que viajaban a pesar de que la Secretaría de Seguridad Ciudadana activó el protocolo de linchamiento nada man so those hundred people got mad. Well, I didn't even get mad too, dude. Because those two dudes that got killed by these hundred people, they were trying to uh, kidnap. They were trying to kidnap people in from their city. So these these people got angry. Like, what the hell are you trying to steal people from here? Like, they know how messed up this is. Like, people get kidnapped and they're never heard of again. And they never catch their captors. So this is, at the same time, justice. This is street justice right here pudieron hacer para rescatar a los dos sujetos. En el municipio de San Buenaventura, en Chihuahua, durante las labores de patrullaje, elementos de la Guardia Nacional decomisaron un lanzacohetes con dos granadas RPG, una granada de mano y cartuchos de diversos calibres. Este pequeño arsenal fue localizado luego de que se registrara una persecución de una camioneta de modelo reciente sin placas y los vidrios polarizados. La... Man, so in other news, in the same video, they caught uh, a car, well, there's the Okay, so... The National Guards uh, were, were in, a, in a car chase with this brand new truck, right, with uh, the windows tinted 100%. And in the in the car chase, I don't know how these guys got away, but um, I guess they ended up throwing away their arsenal. And in this little pocket of arsenal, they had an RPG, grenades, and an RPG launcher, like the, the, the tube to shoot it out. Like, holy crap, man. All right, moving on to the next video. A lot, a lot of information. Guys, I don't know if you guys have heard this news because 
I'm barely hearing about it and I'm trying to see how this is possible but seems that they did a study out there in China with a few uh, a few people only like about 30 people so I'm hoping this is not real I really am hoping this is not real because this is crazy check this out um, doctor I want to ask you about uh, another study a different study entirely that's coming out of China that um, found that COVID, the COVID-19 virus could be found in the semen of infected men does that mean that this might be a sexually transmitted disease as well Yes, um, I'm glad you asked me that question because that's been of significant interest because let, let me start by saying immunologically, there are privileged sites in the body that are not readily attacked by the immune system. One of those areas is the, um, the inner portion of the eyeball, the thyroid gland, the ovary, and of course the testicle. These are called immunologic privilege sites. So it would stand to reason that the virus could reside there without being destroyed by the immune system necessarily for some period of time. That being said, it's possible that uh, sexual intercourse may actually result in transmission of the virus. And um, I'm trying to get data on um, the patient's age and how long they have had the disease. Yeah. Does this virus stay in the semen for a prolonged period of time? Yep. Say a week, two weeks, two months? We Less, maybe? Know. Hopefully. Uh, the Chinese did the study on 38 patients, and only seven of them were noted to have the virus in the semen. But seven out of 38 is a fairly large number. So if we extrapolate that to several hundred people, it may be quite significant. So we have to worry about that. Again, the testicle is a privileged immunologic site, as is the ovary and other parts of the body. That in itself has been very interesting, but in the presence of this particular pandemic, it's extraordinarily important to know that. Yep, it very is. If you're Chinese watching this, well, I'm sorry, but China's, they're, they're, they're liars, bro. Like, they've been lying this whole time. You know what I mean? So, it's just crazy to think that this is actually coming out to light, and it could be true. So holy crap, and that that about sums up this video. Um, this last clip just like it's just it's just really it's just really uh disturbing for real. All right, thanks for watching, guys. Man, it's crazy. Holy crap.